Good morning and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 6th of January 2020 and the time has just gone 9.40 GMT. And this Monday has been a fairly volatile start of the trading week. Uh, carry on from the news on Friday, US Iran tensions um, are, are, are very high. At the back end of last week, there was an airstrike carried off uh, by the US military uh, which killed an Iranian military commander in Iraq. That sent, uh, broadly speaking, sent uh, global stock markets lower and it ramped up the price of oil and it also ramped up the price of gold and the Japanese yen, seeing as the latter two are classic flight to play qualities. Tensions between Iran and the US have gotten worse uh, over the weekend. Um, Iran strongly suggested that they're going to have some sort of um, violence or violent or military retaliation against the US. The United States made it very clear that if there's any sort of violent response from the Iranian regime, they've already earmarked 52 sites um, um, as targets in Iran. Uh, and on top of that, um, the United States have also come out, you know, on top of that, um, Iraq is also in the mix. Um, Iraq have made it very clear that they want to um, uh, expel or force out um, foreign um, foreign armies such as the US. Whereas President Donald Trump has said, if Iran, if if Iraq go down that route and look to get a kick out the US army that are the mil US military that are in Iraq, they would then look to impose heavy sanctions on Iraq. So the Middle East um, is obviously a large oil producing region, and and, and in the midst of it. There is a very high tensions, uh, and with that, we're seeing a continuation of what we saw on Friday. Uh, global, you know, European equity markets uh, are firmly in the red. We're seeing a push to the upside um, in uh, in the oil contracts, uh, and we're also seeing um, moves move to the upside in um, metals such as silver and gold. Uh, we're also seeing uh, so we're also seeing um, a lot of volatility uh, across basically mar markets as a whole. Uh, just because there's a real kind of fear factor that you know things could you know could potentially spiral out of control in, in relation to Iran. It's also worth noting, you know, if you look at say where, where global equity markets were, where European and US equity markets were at the back end of 2019, the very beginning of 2020, they're in quite a strong position. The, you know, in uh, in late December, a FTSE hit a multi-month high at the highest level it's seen since July. In mid-December, the DAX hit a 23-month high, and even you know in the early New Year. Um, we saw record highs on U.S. indices. So stocks were, were fairly strong and lofty going into this um, heightened tension between the U.S. and, and Iraq, or U.S. the U.S. and Iran. Um, so you know it can act as, as a kind of a, an excuse for some traders to take some cash off the table. We'll take a quick look at the uh, the week ahead article, uh, and then after that we'll take a look at some of the major markets. So the Wicked article can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com under news analysis, um, uh, you, you can then find you can then find the um, you can then find the updates that we post. Um, take a look along here along the latest news. Um, what, what we can then do is for this particular article, we can see here that um, we've had the euros. We have had many um, service PMI reports come out of the uh, of, uh, of Europe today. Looking ahead to tomorrow, we have the Eurozone Flash, CP, uh, Eurozone Flash CPI reading. Um, it is worth noting um, that the um, that we had strong inflation figures out of both France and Germany at the back end of last week. So traders will be keeping an eye out for the headline figure from the Eurozone. On Wednesday, we have first quarter figures from Walgreens Boots Alliance. On Friday, we have the jobs report out of Canada and the US. U.S. non-farm payrolls being, you know, arguably the most important economic report of the month. And wh while while we're talking about U.S. non-farm payrolls, it is worth pointing out um, that we're hosting a non-farm payrolls live webinar event, uh, which is on Friday the 10th of January, uh, 13:15 GMT. You can sign up for it here, and uh, it's going to be a live coverage of the of the numbers as they come out and kind of you know uh, live as the minute analysis of the numbers and reactions to the markets. And speaking of the markets, I'll take a look now at what's going on on the major markets. I'll run down to what's going on on the big indices, on oil and gold, and then take a look at some of the big currency pairs. 
the first things first, like I said, the level that we, we saw the FTSE 100 in late December had a, had a uh, multi month high, so the FTSE was in a fairly strong position. We can see now that we've seen a bit of weakness on the FTSE 100 in the last couple of sessions. There's been a decline in positive momentum as the market's moving lower. So things do appear to be kind of turning over. If, if, the, uh, if the recent negative mood continues on the FTSE 100, we could be looking heading back down towards this area here in around 7,470, possibly even down to uh, 7,400. But let's not lose sight of the fact that the wider, up, the wider trend since early October has been very much to the upside. It was not long ago where are multi month highs and should the political situation diffuse or look to ask, at our, our tempers calm a little to the US and Iran, we could see the wider upward trend continue. And should that be the case, we could be looking at retaking 7,600. And should we, should we retake the, uh, the, the highs of late December, we could then be looking, heading up towards this area here in around 7,794. Obviously, this is very much dependent on the political situation between the US and Iran. Take a look at what's going on over uh, in Germany. As we, saw, as we saw here in December, we saw the German market hit a 23-month high, which is obviously quite a, very strong, quite a strong position. It could really get above this area here, uh, this zone, in around 13,000. 450 there thereabouts the market on a few occasions couldn't really break beyond that we have seen a move to the downside we're now back below the 50 moving average that's worth noting the DAX hasn't traded push below properly push below the 50 moving average and seven months since early October so it's back below its 50 moving average um, and we're actually below the psychological psychological important 13,000 metric so if we look to press that lower from here, we could be looking at retesting the early December lows, and that comes into play in around 12,885. And should we go below that, we could be looking heading back down towards this area here in around 12,800. Like I said, the wider trend, the, up, uh, the wider, bigger picture trend is very much to the upside. So if you do look to kind of retake um, the 50 moving average, we could be looking at heading back towards 13,200 and should we go beyond that we could then be looking at retesting the highs that we saw in late December and early January Take a look at what's going on over on the US markets now they're in a, in a better position So we did see only um, at the very the first trading day of 2020 the Dow Jones racked up you know yet another all-time high We've come off those those highs ever so slightly you know in the grand scheme of things uh, given now some people are talking about World War Three, let's look at where the Dow Jones is. It's not too far away from the all-time high, and if anything, it's closer to its all-time high than it is closer to its 50-day moving average, this blue line here. But nonetheless, sentiment appears to be sour. The last few sessions have been negative, so if we do look to kind of push on lower from here, we could be looking heading back down towards this, you know, the psychologically important 28,000. And if you have a size of move. Below that, it could take us back down toward this zone here, down around 27,400 or uh, 27,325. And obviously, if you know, the wider upward trend continues, we could be looking at rete retesting uh, the recent, high recent highs um, at 20, just north of 28,900. And then if you go beyond that, trends could be linked up, up towards 29,000. Taking a look on the S&P 500, similar position. It wasn't too long ago. We we're at all-time highs. You know the markets have come off for those highs, but we're, you know, but considering the headlines, markets are still looking reasonably strong. We have seen a move to the, the to the downside in the last couple of sessions. The market is on the MACD indicator. It's going from positive momentum to negative momentum. So for the time being, the control appears to be with the sellers. If you press lower from here, we could be looking at targeting 3,200 or down to 3,180. If you do see uh, a continuation in the kind of wider upward trend, we could be looking at retesting the kind of 3,260 zone. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at targeting, you know, we've been fresh all-time high territory of 3,000, you know, heading towards, potentially towards 3,270, 80, so on and so forth. Like I was saying, we've had a major move in the oil market 
uh, in, in the last couple of sessions. So we'll take a look now at what's going on at Brent Crude. So even before we had the major jolt higher of the last two sessions, we could see since early October we saw that the oil market was making a slow and steady push to the upside. We could see it was creeping along higher, a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. So the, the, the trend for the last few weeks and months already was, was to the upside. We've seen the market push on higher. So far, Brent has failed to actually take out the highs of September, but we're not too far away from it. That comes into play there or thereabouts in one of the kind of 72 mark. If you do have a size of break beyond 72, we can then be looking at targeting this zone here, the late May highs in around 73 spot 60. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this area here in around 75 spot 71. If we do see any pullbacks in the oil market, we could find some support from the kind of psychologically important $70, $70 per barrel area or potentially in around 69. And it's only really if you kind of have a size of break below this area here in around 65 spot 79. It's only if you have a size of break below that, because then we begin to think, you know what, maybe, maybe the kind of um, the kind of the wider upward, the, the recent upward trend, uh, is actually cooling off and, uh, and coming to an end. Let's take a look at what's going on on WTI West Texas Intermediate. Uh, WTI is in a stronger position because the highs that we saw in WTI as of today have actually managed to take out the highs of September. So we're back at levels last seen in April last year. So it gives indication of how bullish the uh, WTI market is. If we compress it higher from here, we could be looking at retesting this zone here in around 66, or maybe north of $66 per barrel. Um, should we see a bit of a move to the downside in WTI, any form of a pullback, we could see support come back into play in around $63, $63 um, a barrel. Or potentially down towards this area here in around $60.68 and even if you go below that you can find some support from this area here in around 60 bucks per barrel. I'll just, uh, before we finish up now I'll take a look um, before we finish up things on the commodity front I'll finally take a look at gold. Gold's had a, a very impressive run recently. It's been moving higher in the last few weeks. And then given what's going on with the, in the, in the US and Iran, and Iran, we have seen another jolt to the upside in the gold market. And we're now, we should be at um, fresh six year highs. So we're, we're now at levels last seen in April 2013. So about say, there they're about six and a half year high. So the, so the gold market is moving steadily higher. If you look to kind of continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting sixteen hundred dollars on the on the price of gold. Should we see the market, you know, cool off a little bit uh, and give give back some of the ground that was made, we could see support come into play in this zone here in around fifteen fifty five. And if we, even if you have a fairly sizable correction, we could look back down toward this area here of fifteen twenty, and then move below that could take us back down towards. 1500 but like I said we're at levels you know say six six and a half year high so it's very clear that we're, we're still in a uh, in an upward trend I'll take a look at a couple of currency pairs now before we look to wrap things up um, starting off with the British pound versus the US dollar so obviously you've had a good run between September uh, through December market gave off gave off gave pull back or hand back some of the gains that it made uh, on the back of the sizable conservative majority at win at the at last month's general election, but we seem to be seem to be look to kind of build on those gains again. The market handed back some of the gains. We've bounced back. We've had a kind of a pullback again. We, it do appear to be kind of moving on higher. And essentially, what we hold below, what we hold above rather, the uh, 50 day moving average here, which comes to play and. Uh, in around one spot 29.90. If you could hold, continue to hold above that metric, you know the kind of the more recent um, upward trend of the last few months is likely to continue. And should we press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 132. We could be looking at retesting um, the late December high in a one spot 32.84. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this zone here in around 135. It's only really if you have a size of break below the uh, below the kind of 129 area down 
this area here, there, and thereabouts. Because then we begin to think, you know what, maybe we got further ground to give up on the, on the pound versus the dollar. But should that be the case, we could look at heading back down towards this red line here to turn the moving average, which is in at one spot 26.91. And lastly, I shall take a look at the euro versus the US dollar. Like I said, uh, at the back end of tomorrow, we have inflation figures from the Eurozone. At the back end of the week, we have the all-important U.S. non-farm payroll figures. So it's likely we could see volatility in the euro dollar. So basically, since August, broadly speaking, we've seen a push to the upside in the euro versus the U.S. dollar. It hasn't always been that particularly clear. It's been a bit sideways. Uh, but nonetheless, we're holding above the eternity moving average, this red line here. And while if we hold above that metric, it's likely we could see further gains be made. So if we do press on higher from these levels, we could be looking at targeting this zone here in around 1 spot 12.49. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading it back up towards 1.13. If on the, on, on, the, on the other hand, the market does manage to turn over on itself, and we do kind of press on lower from here, we could be looking at heading back down towards this blue line here, the 50 moving average, and that comes into play in at one spot 1090. And if you go below that, we could then look at, look at heading back down towards the 130 moving average, this yellow line here, uh, and that comes into play in at one spot 1053. Uh, well, thank you for listening. Uh, please tune in next week and have a good trading week. Thank you very much.